Hello Tubesters. Oh, hang on a minute. A star needs his lighting. It's not this side. Right, uh, Tubesters, thanks for joining me on another video. Uh, it's two today, as I said on the previous one, if you watch that. Uh, if you haven't, I don't blame you. Uh, we're having a look at... Let's see if it fetches the box out. The French FT17 from Meng, it is, it is Meng. Uh, I've been looking at a lot of vehicles, uh, a lot of First World War uh, 1 in 35 scale models uh, over the last couple of days. Uh, if any of you have got any memory that isn't shot to pieces like mine, you will remember uh, some Maras of the channel, that's friends to you for the rest of you that don't know, they uh, they sent me out the blue, a, uh, they said uh, a couple of years ago now, uh, They've got a uh, a gift they wanted to send, uh, and it turned out it was not this one. It was the full interior one. Now I completely stuffed it up. Uh, although since uh, in my own defence, <laughs> look as he grasps for any short uh, type of straw, uh, somebody had left a comment a few months back saying that. Uh, They'd also had the same problems with the engine fitting. Um, it, it was definitely a millimeter or whatever, or two millimeter, whatever it was, out of out of whack. Uh, and I just couldn't get it to go together. Um, I couldn't get the hull together. It's with the this. I can only speak from this one and the the full interior kit. They really have minute tabs to put them together. Uh, the way that the different hull platings put together has things hanging in thin air. Well, well no, let's not go into it now because it's easy to talk about it on the on the on the workbench. But it was a complete stuff up. Uh, I, I have passed it on if uh, to to uh, another YouTuber in case they did. I passed on the full interior T55 kit to him, and I th I threw that in the box as well just to say, look, you know, if you can. Do something with it do so and if you can't drive over it because i was about to if it wasn't a gift i would have driven over it uh, <laughs> some sort of satisfaction in there and they say there's no sometimes no satisfaction in modeling uh yeah i've really been i i am a great war history buff whatever you want to call it as we all know vietnam um world war ii colonial <laughs> you name it gav's got an interest in it but my main, uh, my main uh, interest is the Great War, the First World War, um, and I've been really hankering it. I, I, I'd seen that uh, Tacom do a a Whippet tank and a male tank, uh, an all female tank for for not too. I think the Whippet was definitely around twenty five pound that I saw. Well, that's that's in my ballpark, you know. Uh, and I thought, well, one, the wife is going to go nuts if I try and wedge another kit onto the stash pile when I haven't done any any others. And uh, I just thought to myself, well, if you can't build that FT17, which you've now had for well over a year or more, probably longer, uh, you can't be building any other First World War vehicle, you know, just if you can't build that and as difficult it is, it, it, and I knew it was still going to be difficult because I've since then I've been looking up on lots of reviews and build vlogs and blogs on not, not necessarily on YouTube, just you know, written ones on, on different. I'm not a member of any modeling forums, but you know, they if you put a search engine in, they come up. And I would say that these are this, this model, I don't know about any of the other um, Meng stuff, this model. Is not I would say for a beginner uh, and I class myself although I've been doing it as we all know now a couple of three could be three years I'll, I'll, I'll lose track I really am a beginner because I don't model I, I always have a model on the go but because I'm a figure painter and I do it for commission work as well which takes obviously most of my time up the downtime from commission painting is sometimes spent painting other figures like these Tommy Wall figures so the modeling is always there but I don't get to do it as much as as full-on modelers and I 
so obviously don't improve. And also, as I say, with my, my mental health problems, my memory, some people call it fog, I just say it's my memory's shot, it goes in and out, and I find reading instructions sometimes can be a, a bit of a, a pain. It's weird, I've said to you guys, I can read a book, uh, a Great War history book, you know, not a problem. And yet, trying to process simple things like like uh, like instructions can be a, a, can be quite difficult. I have found, but I'm really really made up uh, pleased. Uh, I've got. I wasn't ever going to show this. I said to Greg Riley, I'm not going to show this video. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to make a video of this FT17 until it's completely built. And I'm now. <laughs> you know what I'm like. <laughs> Bit of good news. You want to shout about it, you know. So I've got some of the hole together. Now you just know I'm just starting to build the wheels. You know now something's going to go massively wrong. Tracks, <laughs> anything, I don't know. Something's going to go wrong. <laughs> and it'll be ooh, another failed project. But I thought, stuff it. I've got this far, which was a hell of a lot farther than I've got before. Uh, I've actually got a complete hole together. So, um, all right, they're not necessarily a complete hole together, but it's more or less there. Anyway, I'm going way off tangent again. Mr. and Mrs. Beetle, that's two models I'm making that you've you've uh, you've sent me. The Star Wars Snowspeeder. Uh, let's give you an update on that because it's not been a video, and there won't be a video until I've actually got it. I'm actually going to do just to. It it's uh, that that is just going to be done shown as one video when it's at the end. Uh, the Snowspeeders all together. The holes all together sorry i've just thought i'm about to start talking on and loading up a video as we're talking uh the, the sorry the cockpit's all together and painted i'm almost finished painting the crew because they can go in i've got to mask the cockpit or suit the cockpit then uh, canopy even onto the cockpit or oh, you don't stick it click it and um but then i have to mask it because i do want to spray it all over uh, before doing anything else so there's progress on that as well, but the FT-17, who's are? Who'd have thought it? Right, let's go down to the bench, guys, to say this was going to be a quick video. <laughs> Never in, this, in, a, in a month of Sundays. I'll, I'll see you down at the bench. Right, guys, uh, we have some progress. We have the hull of an FT-17. Uh, this is going to be an American one, by the way. You get two options in this kit. I believe the full interior you get three or four uh, and I would have obviously done a French one um, but you get a, 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 an American one for Verdun in 1918 and a Chinese one from the early 1920s in the you know the civil wars and things like that so uh, I went for because obviously I'm a great war buff uh, I went for the uh, American one so here is our rather flimsy uh, hull. Uh, I have painted it. Uh, the one thing I, I'm not sure why they didn't include, although they might, I don't know how much we're going to see when I close stuff up. Uh, they, there's, there's on the full interior one, there's a firewall that goes along the back, and it's a, it's a shame they didn't include that because obviously you're looking through into nothing, and I don't really understand why they wouldn't have put the firewall in, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, I've only done a basic paint job because I intended to to blow over some some varnish and then put you know some satin varnish and then put uh, some washes in there. Uh, it said white paint. Uh, the only I wanted to use my lacquers on this, and the only one I'd got was actually German World War Two interior, that creamy white, uh, which I actually don't think is too bad because it's going to be obviously grubbed up a bit, you know, dirtied up a bit. So, uh, so I just put. Uh, Two basic, you know, one one base coat and a high and a highlight on everything. You know, not that there's a lot there. I was going to put some wiring on this little. Uh, I think it gives a miles per hour or something like that. I'm not sure to be honest with you, but uh, uh, this here hasn't been painted yet. I actually forgot to put it in <laughs> before I paint it before I put it in. So they're like two steering rods, so they'd have to be put uh, some black paint on that. But let's just see. Right, let's get pointy stick. Now, what I'm on about, very, very fiddly way of doing things, in my opinion, uh, uh, is 
something like like these these two plates here this small plate here that hangs literally you can't really see it can you but it it, it hangs on nothing really um, so it's always going to move up and down under under pressure of of you know not pressure but when you're gluing it uh, yes it's good to have some movement because you whichever way you do this if you hang this plate down first it's still going to be more or less uh, nothing now this only has one contact point really where well, this does have two I must admit but you'd still really need that on there in my opinion to get this to go down uh, which does leave you with gaps all over the place uh, and it's it's a symptom of the whole the whole build really uh, this you just cannot not avoid getting a gap I've dry fitted it a million times over um, as you can see I've been filling it uh, with Let's just quickly have a look. Now Jennifer over at uh, Genesis Scale Models and Designs channel, uh, she does a lot of this type of filling and I've taken it to heart and it really works for me. So what I do is to fill gaps, as, you, as I've explained on another video on the Tommy's Wall figures even, I will put some, uh, well, if I'm filling gaps, I will use uh, a cheaper super glue and a runnier one it is still gel but it's a runnier gel and I put a on the end of a scalpel I put a bit of talcum powder in it uh, the more you know the thicker you need it for the bigger gap honestly you can add a bit more in uh, that goes off in literally you know minutes uh, if you want to speed it up then I use this uh, for uh, it's um, you know an activator for super glue it's got a brush it has a pump dispenser you can put put in but obviously on models you just spray the whole thing with it so uh, I even sometimes just put a cocktail stick in and that will literally make it go off now what I've done I'm, I'm really I, I think to me it's I've advanced a bit in modeling in my understanding of, of how to solve problems and it's it's really made me uh, feel feel you know it's given me a buzz today um, it's not a lot to you guys but I couldn't get this together before it's as I say it's very ramshackly there's no real decent locating points so what I did was I put if we just use this as an example let's go back in close again it still needs bits of filling as in places but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it uh, I'd stay I think this one because that's a separate now that's sorry no that's so yeah it's all one there so I'd start somewhere up here uh, not all the way at the end but somewhere around here and I would put a piece of super glue just on a cocktail stick and then I would put another piece somewhere where there is a small join there um, and then I would put some of that activator on to make it go off really quick but it's still flexible enough then that I would press it together and then put modeling glue um, you know my usual Tamiya you know instant type glue I forget what it's called now and I did that working my way along another bit of glue there say and uh, more more normal modeling glue and then and I only did about probably about four or five pieces of just again just a dab on the cocktail but enough for the super glue to hold it in place for me and there was always going to be gaps especially with me doing it um, so then what I did was do this the talcum powder and the the super glue and I went over it and and filled it you can see how it spilled out there but I'm not particularly much particularly worried about that um, I mean that's how it's supposed to look anyway with the bottom plate and then what I do is I use a scalpel uh, it's it's better to use a scalpel first you see it's still got the um, talcum from last night uh, and scrape it away once it's gone off uh, I just go and do it, you could put activator on there as well you know to, to, to get it to harden off quicker but I, I don't bother with that um, at that stage there's always something else to be doing on the model to let that go off for, for you know five minutes or so and I then scrape it back and then I use a sanding stick or just sandpaper depending on what's needed so you can see we've got gaps there still so there's still bits to do on it uh, I've given that a filling and and doing that with the talcum powder it makes it a lot more you know you've got a rigid a rigid uh, 
process, you know, body there that's because it is it is quite a, a flimsy little thing. Uh, I've still got gaps to do on that one. Um, that's supposed to be working. I don't know what I've done. Probably have to. It's probably caught some glue somewhere, but it doesn't feel very working to me. But uh, again, that's a bridge to a crust. Even if it doesn't work, I don't care. <laughs> if the, the as long as I get it. Sorry, that's my. Uh, one of you tubes is out there crashing Gav's uh, crashing Gav's video. So yeah, I'm really really happy. I mean that although I painted that on the sprue, it turns out I'm going to have to paint it all over anyway because that has to go under here. So painting, it, you know, you'll have to paint that on the body type of thing. Really really happy with that. As I say, it's um. Give me next. Sorry, that's Keith from Keith's. Uh, Keith's models and RCs. Thank you, Keith. Another uh, video where uh, uh, what they call it photo bombing, video bombing. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know if they're supposed to make them loose or not. I I I, I didn't find instructions th in places that that good. Um, I mean, they si they've simplified them, but sometimes they turn. You can't always like this guy here. I'd um. I'd put that upside down uh, and had to take it off because when I came to put this on I realised obviously there was a apex and obviously the apex is at the bottom so little things like that um, but on the on the diagram of the model they'd got it something oh, I don't know anyway I, I, I did it wrong but yeah really really happy I'd say for a video I wasn't going to make um, because <laughs> you just know now there's going to be something else that's going to go wrong and I shouldn't have made this video but really really happy with that I've wanted to make the FT17 for so long and finally um, you know I seem to be progressing will it be the best FT17 <laughs> that anybody's ever made from Meng no <laughs> but it's mine and I'm if I can just get it together get the tracks on and make it look something like and this comes with a small diorama base you can stick it on as well uh, I was actually I've got a completely different idea for the for, to, to to do a dio of my own uh, on the original FT17. Uh, I won't be I'll be using this one for with the built the the the, the main diorama. Uh, I'm 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 doing that little Tommy's War one at the moment. I really don't want to be getting into doing another one. There'll be another time to um, to uh, to to do that. Uh, I've. Um, yeah, I'm looking at. Uh, I won't be. There's Meng do a male. I don't know if it's a Mark One, Mark Three, Mark Five, uh, British tank. Uh, I won't be touching it with a barge pole um, because I've seen some people building it, and it, it has a certain not issues, but for people like me who, who aren't who are either only learning or have only got a skill level of a certain <laughs> certain number of skill points to their name, I, I can't be doing with it. But tack on. Do a, so a lovely whippet tank for about twenty five quid. Uh, they do a, a male and a female tank. I don't know what prices they go for, but I'm really interested in doing that. I, I keep thinking of doing either the Austin armored car that Mini Art have brought out. It's a full interior, and I, I fell flat on my face with that T fifty five. So again, could I really do it? Uh, and the bus which I. Uh, they do a, an omnibus either for you could do it in the red normal London colours of the First World War or just after the war. Uh, but they do a that you can obviously paint it. Uh, they use these buses to sh shuttle troops up and down the front. And uh, I, I fancy doing that one, but that could be maybe just a step too far. I don't know. And they also do a nice lorry, which uh, Rob from uh, Rob's <laughs> sorry, Rob. Rob's model, <laughs> uh, it might be actually Rob's model. Uh, Rob's doing a lovely civilian version of the uh, the British lorry, which I can't remember the, the what brand it was or whatever. Um, but he's he's doing a culvert truck version from post war. Uh, but they also do, as I say, as a military version. So there's lots of and couple state models. I mean, looking at their armored cars as well. So there's lots of options on the go for me. And but I really thought well. You know, you've got a big enough stash pile as it is without ever thinking you was going to have one. Uh, you've got a First World War tank sitting in there. 
but I was just so scared to build it after the last one and all the trouble I've had with tracks and everything. But um, no, really, really happy how this has gone. So sorry, I'm, I'm waffling on this one, but it's just, well, all right, I waffle on them all, but you know what I mean? Waffling, rambling, whatever, but it's just, you know, models are simple things in life to, to a lot of people, but when you've got like some of the difficulties I have, uh, little thing little victories mean a lot you know so uh you know they can make or break you in a day and uh this one's certainly last last night when i i put my last bits on uh for the night and i you know had to go on these wheels i just thought i'm going to do a video on this because i'm so chuffed so mr and mrs beetle again you know it's uh this was one from was it a year 18 months two years i don't know but can't thank you enough uh uh, I, you know, it was the same with the last one. I just couldn't build the damn thing. So, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, they're subjects close to my heart. And I, I, as I say, when things go right, they can make the difference in your day. As I say, stupid little thing. I know it's a model. It's like painting a figure. Uh, but when you, not even when you've got difficulties like myself, but you know, if you've just had a, a rubbish day at work or, or whatever you do in life, you know, if you've just had a, a you know a, a day that hasn't gone right or a week or whatever and you pick a kit up or you pick a figure up to paint uh they really are supposed to be there to boost you you know to to to, to put a smile on your face and uh you know the last couple of nights building this uh certainly has so guys thanks for listening to me waffle and ramble on but uh you know it, it's you know, I, I think you know when you when you can't get enthused about a project, you know, what, you know, there's not much point in doing, it, is it? So, uh, and I've fallen my, flat on my face on so many of these, uh, and I've been willing to put them up on video just because I've always said, uh, you know, for every good one that you see me bouncing up and down in my seat, you know, there'll be something that I've fallen on my face with. Uh, but uh, you know, I think you just got to be honest with people at the end of the day. So, thank you very much. Uh, to uh, the Beatles yet again. Uh, this was, I say, a gift from from a, a you know at least a couple of years ago, uh, and uh, and to Jen over at uh, Jen's uh, <laughs> Genesis Models and Designs for being a top class modeler who isn't afraid, not afraid, but who doesn't mind sharing sharing your gifts with the rest of us that aren't maybe who are a bit more challenged on the modeling front, and. To all the guys out there that give me uh, their advice on, on obviously my married Greg Riley, he's always in the background. At, you know, we chat most days. You know, just on the messenger, just dropping a few messages on how things are going and that. Uh, so again, Greg, thank you very much. Uh, you know, and to all you other guys out there, if I start mention, I was going to start mentioning names, and if I do, I'm going to leave somebody out, and that's not fair. So. Uh, thank you very, very much for all your support on me on my modelling and my figure painting. But obviously, it's my modelling that I always fall down on my face on. So, <laughs> so uh, I appreciate all the kind words. Look after yourselves, guys. We'll catch each other soon, presumably on another video.